Hey folks, welcome back to the kitchen for video 4, Nathan Fretwald, Puns and Gags, the service. I'm rushing this intro after I finished uh, making the video. The one I shot didn't work with uh, what turned out. I'm going to start this video with a little caveat. While I do make the finished deck in uh, this video, I'm not entirely satisfied with the results and I'm probably going to end up remaking it off camera once the contest has ended. If I had an extra two weeks, I would probably have remade it from scratch, but you know. As my name is not Jimmy DeResta, I don't get an extra two weeks. Without starting the Jimmy DeResta rant, uh, this is why I voted for uh, Brad Andrew. He, he made an interesting guitar and he did it on time. In this video, I made the neck, I made the fretboard. Doesn't quite turn out the way uh, I'd hoped, but it that's not okay. I also reveal the Empire's latest super secret super weapon, um, something that is guaranteed to uh, make me win this contest and hopefully not going to cause a massive angry flame war of angry comments telling me that I can't do that in the comment section below. Getting hope, right? Let's get on with it. This is Fagus Sylvatica, but he only really gets called out by Mr. and Mrs. Sylvatica shortly before they ground him for getting a D minus on his history test. Normally, everyone calls him Beach. And this is Quirkus Alba. A tough, no-nonsense wood with a naval past, mostly known by her street name, Oak. He's tight-grained, she's open-grained. Together, they fight crime. They're gonna be the uh, neck and fretboard of my guitar. Why these two? Same deal as Ash in the body, really. This is really the best they've got at my local wood shop. They did use to stock naval planks for a local bowling alley. Since that place closed, they're not really restocking it. Because it was a specialised use wood, it was not cheap to begin with. Beach is, overall, a little bit less harder than maple, but it holds up to the job of being a guitar neck. Perfectly. I've built necks with it before, and honestly, looks aside, I really couldn't tell the two apart. They work very similarly. As for oak, well, I wanted the dark fretboard this time. I couldn't really budget for rosewood or ebony, so uh, I'm gonna try darkening it up with a bit of steel wool and vinegar. Big thanks to uh, Bob and Basilla uh, from last year's build for uh, letting me know of that trick. For now, I'm gonna work on making the neck. Uh, I need to cut 545 millimeters out of this neck. I can get that just out before that's not old. Right, to the saw. Okay, I need an off-center centerline. If I was making a normal neck, then yes, my centerline would be straight down the middle. No problems there. However, this body has an asymmetric neck pocket. So yeah, my centerline, if it was on center, would be uh, in the wrong place. Okay, so I'm arbitrarily just gonna declare that my centerline is three and a half centimeters away from the right edge. And there you go. I've got two templates, one for the start of the neck, one for the end of the neck. I'm gonna trace them out. That's my neck. Next thing to do is gonna be to route in my truss rod. Now, hold on a minute, Andy, I hear you cry. Didn't you say that the whole point of this build was that you were going to build all your own hardware yourself, including truss rods? Okay, yeah, you got me there. This is the only place where I have bowed entirely to financial pressure. This is pretty much the only part of the bill where the cost of the raw materials was about double the cost of buying the purchased product. I could buy a standard dual action truss rod for, I think it was £9.69, including shipping. If I wanted to buy the uh, raw materials, I would have ended up paying something along the lines of £20, and that's not counting the cost of whatever favour it would have cost me to uh, use someone's welder. TLDR, I just went with the pre-made option. I'm only human with a human budget. Get my router out and let's do this. Ta-da! Okay, I'll be perfectly honest, this was not the world's uh, greatest routing joint. Things kind of slipped a little bit. I went in um, a little bit deep on the starting spot. Fortunately, I have a pack of six millimeter dowels uh, ready for this exact opportunity. So I'm gonna quickly glue this dowel in, saw it flat, and then that should hide all my crimes. So with that little uh, boo-boo cleared up, let's actually get this closer to shape. I'm gonna saw off the sides. Plane everything down and uh, bring this closer to a neck-like shape. For this, for once, I'm not going to use my Dazuki. While my Dazuki is my best saw, I am also kind of terrible at using it for doing long rip cuts. So uh, I've broken out my bargain basement uh, jigsaw and I'm going to use that instead. I've uh, set up this rather pointless contraption which uh, dangles my neck way off the edge of my bench because I don't want to risk cutting into the workbench. I mean, sure, I. Lost my security deposit probably the femtosecond after I moved in for daring to breathe on the wallpaper without landlord's explicit permission, but I think I should at least try and not completely destroy the uh, furnishings. <laughs> 
I hate this thing and I wish I had a bandsaw. <laughs> Okay, looks like I'm going to have to do at least this part with my uh, Ryoba anyway. There isn't enough wood there for this to be a completely stable platform and my saw is veering off to the side and I don't want to start the uh, neck off quite this early. So, hand tools it is. Okay, camera's running out of uh, juice again. I'm going to go recharge it real quick and do this off camera. Sorry to pull a scene missing on everyone again, um, but let's face it, at this point I am late enough in the contest that uh, I, I can't afford to just lay down tools just because I'm waiting for the camera battery to recharge. Off camera, uh, I carried on. I cut out the entirety of the guitar and I finessed all the edges. There was a fair bit of planing involved. My shooting board made another appearance. Frustratingly enough, it was the humble sanding stick which turned out to be the single most useful part of it. There is an irony to it all. I'm willing to spend hundreds on tools. But it turns out that the best one is an off-cut of MDF with some 80 grit sandpaper super glued to it. Go figure. Anyway, this is uh, where we're at. Fits into the neck pocket pretty well. With the neck fitting in the pocket, it's uh, now time to join the two a little bit more permanently. Or temporarily, given that this is a bolt-on neck. Quick clarification. When I say bolt-on, I mean I'm going to be using actual nuts and bolts. None of this cheap fender wood screw malarkey. Here's how I'm going to go about doing it. One, lay out on the, uh, the neck where the T-nuts are going. I, I've kind of already done that. This is uh, something like take six. Two, drill the holes. This tip I learned from watching Matthias Wandel. When you're using T-nuts, what you want to do is put them in the recess that you've drilled for them and then hit them with a hammer, just gently. The prongs will leave little divots, and then you drill those out with a small diameter drill bit. The prongs effectively have pilot holes drilled for them, so that when they're squeezed into the wood, they don't end up causing the grain to split. I've already done that one. Didn't have the camera on, but uh, I drilled all the pilot holes. Step three, use the holes that I've drilled as uh, templates, and mark the inside of the neck pocket. Right, they're, they're faint, but they're there. Four, drill the holes that I've just marked. And yes, given that I no longer have a flat surface, this is uh, awkward as hell. And finally, step five, counter drill the holes for the ferrules. Hmm. On reflection, this might be easier to do with my drill. Yes, I know, I should have done all this before I planed the faces in, but only human, everyone makes mistakes. Let's hope this isn't one of them. Hey, future Andy here, interrupting the build because I, 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 I don't want to show you that. <laughs> that was a dumb, that was a blunder. That was uh, up there with going up against a Sicilian when death is online or starting a major land war in Asia. So, good news, I didn't completely destroy the guitar. Actually, I didn't even destroy the guitar. Uh, I managed to drill the holes uh, without blowing through anything or breaking anything, but it was just, yeah, it was not the right way to do it. So, I plugged up the holes I drilled with dowels, and instead of ferrules, I'm just going to make a neck joint plate out of this sheet of aluminum. Right, so uh, with that said, on with the rest of the show. Right, I've already done a little bit of uh, off-camera layout work. I'm going to hack this out and then uh, clean it up. Just like old times, eh? <laughs> I'm going to drill them, then flip it around, cancelling the outside to fit uh, M5 bolts, uh, and see about getting it uh, installed on body. That looks a lot better. Right, let's get the uh, T-nuts in and let's install this puppy. One eternity later. Well, all right. Yes! <clears throat> Excuse me. Things are taking shape. Uh, yeah, this is this is solid. This ain't going nowhere. Uh, the plate might need a little bit of tweaking. I definitely think I'm going to need to chop off this little uh, bit here. Although I think I'm going to actually save that until I've done the finishing on this because I think that's going to be the tab that uh, I attach my anodizing gear to. <laughs> I almost can't believe this is for real. Okay, one or two things more to do, and then it's going to be time to start making the fretboard. Uh, next couple of steps, I'm going to need to clear this area up a bit. Did, did you think I was going to leave it like that, with the uh, nuts just poking out? I'm going to put a couple dabs of super glue in there to make sure that these nuts ain't going nowhere. Two, uh, I'm going to plane this whole area down at an angle and glue an offcut 
from the sides of the neck onto it, which should give it a nice little decorative uh, touch and hide the, the main four bolts. Uh, this last one will be hidden by the fretboard. Uh, I managed to glue the inside of the super glue bottle to uh, the lid. So, uh, that's fun. I wonder well if I do actually prefer applying super glue this way. You get a little bit more control when you're actually tapping it down somewhere rather than just globbing it on. Okay, uh, I'm just going to wait for the super glue to cure. Uh, I'm going to trim the bolts down a bit, but I'll do that off camera. Okay, so the next thing to do is to make the uh, cover plate. But first I need to actually unbolt this. Okay, be honest. Hands up everyone who thought that uh, I would end up super gluing the nuts into the bolts. This is one of the offcuts from the side of the neck. And uh, by pure coincidence, it's exactly the right size to cover the side nuts. So I'm going to clamp this down and uh, plane a slight angle into this. And then plane this uh, to an even size and then glue it on. Nothing too bad. And I think I've got an idea of what to do with this. A long time ago, in a lockdown, not too far away from here, a young me, or at least younger by uh, eight months, watched a lot of task makes and decided that he was going to try his hand at making some of that Kaneko stuff. Like many projects started during lockdown, I, I didn't end up doing that, but I did build a, a very basic jig to try and make thin uh, Kamiko-like strips. So I'm going to try and use it, plain this uh, strip of beach down. Right, the block plane was giving me terrible results, so I modified the jig to take my uh, regular plane. And all of a sudden it's working a lot better. It's consistently about 3.2 millimeters thick throughout the length. So uh, I'm going to clean this up a little bit and uh, get ready to glue up. So things went uh, a little pear-shaped. You may notice a slight incongruity here, um, entirely my fault. I went about cleaning the cover plate that I installed. Getting this part nice and flat was easy, but uh, the little triangle here, I screwed it up. I, I took my saw and I cut right into it at the wrong angle. I went right into the neck. <laughs> And then I made things worse trying to clean that up. The cut was deep enough that the only real way to fix it was to hack a chunk out and glue another chunk in. And then I picked the chunk that was too short. Instead of stopping, cleaning up the glue and starting again with another chunk, stupidly I decided that I would pad it in with a popsicle stick that was exactly the right width. It's not as daft as it sounds. This isn't a load bearing section. This is pretty much entirely cosmetic. So it wouldn't have really been a problem if I could have blended it in. This did not blend in. The good news is that it's still only a cosmetic problem and I hope that I should be able to clean this up and make it a little bit less obvious as I do a little bit more shaping and as I install the fretboard. It's nearly time to reveal the Empire's latest and greatest super secret weapon. But before that, we've got to do a couple of things. Cut the fret slots and install the inlays. And then we can start talking about uh, secrets. This is my fret slotting jig. This is actually the only part of the build that has made in a kind of unwitting collaboration with someone else in the uh, GGBO. In this case, I went straight to the top. Uh, this bit, this jig was built in a collaboration between myself and Ben Crow. I'm actually serious about that. Uh, I met Ben Crow briefly uh, when I went down to Maker Central a couple of years ago. Here's, here's some footage I shot back then that should give you uh, an idea of when that happened. I went down to uh, Maker Central in 2018. I saw the vintage tool shop slash Crimson Guitars booth. Yeah, honestly, I thought I would go up there, say hi to Ben, and say thank you for everything that I'd learned from him over the years. Ben Crow's a really nice guy. It was pretty early at the convention, and his booth was pretty much completely empty, so we chatted a bit about Lufury. I expressed my frustrations at how hard it really is to cut fretboards by hand. He sympathised. He also suggested that maybe I should use a saw rather than attempting to karate chop the fret slots in. Won't lie, that kind of blew my mind. We had a five minute back and forth discussing really how to make a simple fret slotting jig. He suggested the main shape, two runners and a crossbar glued to a piece of man-made uh, wood, particle board or MDF, 
uh, something that would not have a grain to it that would uh, warp and weave. And he also suggested embedding neodymium magnets within the uh, crossbar. I, in turn, suggested making the crossbar from aluminum angle, and I also suggested adding the toggle clamps to hold the fretboard on. Frankly, I'd be surprised if Ben remembers it, and I, I don't really expect him to. Uh, I'm sure he meets, you know, tons of people, and I'm just one face among many, and, you know, I, I can live with that. Anyway, I, I went home after Maker Central, and I built this, and then I promptly uh, never used it since. I did think ahead and modify the original design so that it could cut multi-scale fretboards, so I've got a nut embedded in that uh, bar, and I can just loosen it, change the angle of the bar, and uh, tighten it up again. And it's it's pretty damn sturdy. Let's get the uh, fret slots marked out and uh, get going. This is a fretboard I designed in Fretfine 2D. Now I just have to cut these out, line them up very carefully, and glue them back together. As long as everything lines up and the lines are straight, I found this to be a pretty reliable method. Once I've got it cut out, I will glue it onto my fretboard blank. I've taped both halves together, I've checked all the measurements, everything is still perfectly fine. I also took this opportunity to mark where the fret dots are going to go. Right, so the next step is going to be to actually glue this onto uh, the fretboard blank. And for that, uh, I am actually going to use spray adhesive. I see a lot of people use Pritt stick to glue templates to blanks. And the problem with Pritt stick is that it's a PVA based glue which essentially means that it's a water-based adhesive. When you apply it on the paper, the fibres in the paper will actually absorb some of that water and stretch. So uh, when you try and glue it on and you squeeze it to make sure it's nice and flat, the paper will stretch out and uh, the distances between your frets can change. I kind of screwed up my first two or three fretboards. I, I was cutting them fine, I just couldn't understand why they were all in the wrong place. And it was down to the glue. <sighs> try my best not to wuss out, this is the part I always screw up. Done it. My guess is I haven't quite cut the slots deep enough and I'm going to have to revisit them after I'm done raising the fretboard. But that will be a job for then and not for now. Something weird has happened and I think I'm going to have to scrap this fretboard. The cuts are straightened but they appear to be slanting backwards at a very subtle angle and it's, it's consistent across all the cuts, I'm not sure why. I made some cuts on my jig with my uh, Dazuki and a couple of cuts with the crosscut blade of my Ryoba. The Dazuki is constantly slanting the cuts backwards, whereas the Ryoba is cutting them dead on straight. So I'm going to have to scrap that fretboard and start again with uh, a Ryoba. The additional complication there is that the Ryoba has got a much wider curve than uh, my Dazuki. The tang on the frets is 0.9 millimeters, so there's, there's enough there for a friction fit, and this tiny little bit segment of uh, fret I've got in there, it's not moving, it's hard to get out. So I'm thinking that with a bit of super glue and the correct radius, it should be fine. So, uh, yeah, to the woodshop! It took a couple of goes. My old Dazuki is old and knackered, the spine is bent and the blade itself is curving inwards. That was the cause of the fret slots that curved backwards. I tried making one with my Ryoba. It worked, but the curve of the saw it was far too wide to hold the frets. I had one last piece of oak, and both my saws didn't work. So I went down to my local wood shop and bought one of these, I think this is a Shogun 120mm flush cutting saw. This is the best thing for cutting frets that I have ever seen. I got the frets down, uh, I have trimmed the board down. So now the next thing I need to do is trim it to dimension. Taking six millimeters of oak off with a route of it in one part. Not the world's wisest idea, but the only thing that's going to work here. Don't worry, I'll just do it all off camera. Ta da! Next thing I'm going to do is drill in the fret markers, and then we can talk Imperial Secrets. Okay, it's now time to reveal the Empire's latest and greatest super secret super weapon. No boffins were harmed to bring you this information. My guitar's gonna have an LED fretboard. Not just any LEDs. These aren't just your regular dumb lights. These are NeoPixels, to give them the Adafruit brand name. All these are gonna be controlled by this Teensy 4.0 uh, that will reside in the Cabinet of Mysteries along with an 18650, the power of everything. What is the purpose of this? This is part of an ongoing project I've got. To start integrating electronics into guitars, more for the hell of it more than 
any particular vision I've got in mind. You know, just, just to try and do my bit to push guitar technology kicking and screaming out of the 1950s. I can dream. So uh, I'm using a Teensy rather than an Arduino because it's got a processing unit on board that is exceptionally good at uh, working with sound. In theory, I can turn this into an onboard guitar tuner, among other things. Full disclosure, I'm not particularly good at coding. I have not gotten around to actually writing some of the code. So the shiny lights on the fretboard are pretty much the only thing that's going to be ready in time for the GGBO. I had these PCBs custom made and soldered everything on myself. They're six millimeters wide, so they can fit inside the channel left behind by my six millimeter router bit. So what I'm gonna do is route a channel in the back of my fretboard and install the LEDs. And there's a little bit more to it, but I'll explain as I'm going along. Almost. And the uh, second pass for 12 and 24. Quick sanity check, all the PCBs fit perfectly in the trench, exactly as I planned. Now I'm going to pop these out and drill the second trench. The second trench, I hear you cry. Why would you do that? Well, one of the effects that I'm going to be going for is a chase mode. Every fret is going to be acting as a switch. The strings will be connected to the microcontroller via the uh, common ground, and each fret that has an LED on it will act as a switch. So that when I press down on that fret, it'll close the switch and it'll tell the microcontroller to turn that LED on. When I press down on certain frets, the LEDs will light up. This isn't exactly new technology. Uh, I first found this in 2015. Uh, I'll put some links in the description below to uh, videos of other people who've done some of the fretboards. The thing that's different here is that I'm using full RGB near pixels, whereas most of the other people were using single color LEDs. I'm gonna take all these out, flip this around, and then prepare another trench. Okay, that is absolutely spot on. That's about all I can do with the back of the fretboard for now. So, uh, I'm gonna flip this over and start inlaying the acrylic rod fret markers. So I've done my math right, this is about all the acrylic I'm gonna need. That didn't turn out too badly. There's not much point wiring up the electronics until the fretboard's ready to take the frets. And uh, before I get around to raising the fretboard, I still need uh, this for one little operation. The last thing I need to do before I can register the fretboard is to actually use the fretboard to bring the neck to its actual dimensions. So on this side of the neck, because of the uh, standard cutaway, I'm going to route up to about the neck joint and then remove the fretboard rep and replace it with a uh, 3D printed template. And with any luck, that will also help fix the uh, popsicle stick. That's not turned out too bad. The popsicle stick has pretty much just become a small white patch. It's back to the old basking tape and sandpaper super glued to uh, the sanding block. Here we go. Oh, we're almost out of the juice. Uh, guess I'm carrying on without you guys. You know, I, I am kind of jealous. You get to see the end result way before I do. Right, so uh, this is where I'm at. I gotta say, it's not looking too shabby. Anyway, I recharged the camera quickly and uh, cleaned up, put down a drop cloth, because now we're gonna be doing some staining. You know, things are gonna get fun when the uh, mad scientist rubber gloves come on. So as I said at the start of the video, I'm going to stain this with a vinegar acetate solution. Same thing that uh, Bogdan Basil did on his build last year. Actually, I've kind of got the same problem as him. This is an offcut. I practiced a little bit with it. Uh, this is just the iron um, oxide mixture raw onto the oak. It went really dark and then it sort of went uh, a bit orange. As this essentially stains the uh, tannins in the oak to make it dark, the trick, as uh, Bogdan showed last year, is to increase the amount of tannins in the oak. I brewed up a couple of cups of tea onto the oak, and that made it to go very nicely dark. I'm going to apply a couple of coats of uh, chai on it, and then apply uh, one single coat of uh, iron acetate. When that's done, I'm going to put one, maybe two coats of uh, Birchwood Casey's True Oil on it, uh, just as a quick and dirty sealer. Right, so I've given it two coats of tea. That raised the grain up a little bit, so I sanded it back. Frustratingly, the fretboard has warped a bit, but I'm hoping that's the kind of warp that should be fixable by gluing it down. Time to do the magic. Stuff smells foul. I'm 
I'm gonna leave this to uh, dry. Full disclosure, that did not go entirely to plan. It worked, but it only got about three quarters of the way there. In the end, I had to break out some uh, black water-based stain and cover up a couple of spots that just, for some reason, completely refused to go dark. Anyway, I've got the fretboard nice and black now, so I'm gonna apply some uh, true oil. I'm not gonna apply too much of this stuff, uh, just enough to seal the stain into the fretboard. Two, maybe three coats maximum. On the first couple of coats, true oil always bleeds through the stain a little bit. When it stops staining your rag, that's when you know that uh, you've got a decent sealer coat. Gave it three coats of uh, true oil. It's picked up a little bit of sheen, but that's that's just a nice side effect. I guess we're now uh, ready for uh, fretting. I have pre-radiused a length of jumbo fret wire. Just standard nickel silver frets. I know, I'm not using steel like all the cool guys. I'm going to fret the frets on, and then we'll start working on the electronics. First, I'm going to fret in all the frets that don't have LED. And then I'll fret in the frets for the LEDs. Got some uh, fret nippers, kinda. Uh, let's, yeah, let's start cutting frets. I'm just gonna use a small ball peen hammer. Yeah, I find that uh, a hammer this small has got a nice amount of heft to it. I've never needed it to be a dead blow hammer, but a hammer this small, I can just put enough mass into it in one whack and I know that it's not gonna bounce back. Here we go. Just a noisy process and I'm gonna do this off camera. I've got the non-LED frets uh, hammered in. I won't lie, this is kind of terrible work. Uh, if there's one area of illusory that I am not particularly well practiced in, it's fret work. I'm pretty confident that with a bit of fret work and clean up, this will produce a pliable instrument. This is not a pretty job and I should not be mistaken for professional. Yeah, we're getting close to uh, actually wiring in the light up fret markers. So first things first, I need to complete the frets by wiring in all the uh, the chase mode wires. I'm going to do a bit of off-camera layout work and drill a couple of holes. You trying here once again. So, once more in editing, I realised that I was talking complete gibberish. By this point, I'd been at it for something like six hours, my brain was in woodwork autopilot and just really not doing a great job of making sense of what I'm explaining myself. So what I'm doing here is splitting off the individual wires from the ribbon cable, then poking them through the holes I drilled into the fretboard. Once I did that, I stripped the wires and tinned them, then I folded them over the side of the fretboard, hammered a fret in, and soldered the wire directly to the side of the fret. The solder wicks into the gap between the wire and the fret slot, then that fret is electrically connected. And then I repeated that for the nine remaining frets. If I'm being honest, this fretboard is kind of the weakest point of the build. I, I haven't got much experience doing fret work, and I definitely don't have the right tools. And then that stained fretboard kind of proved to be a complete pain in the ass. I think that after the contest has ended, I'm probably going to remake the whole neck and use some of the improvements I came up with while working on this one. Well, I think I've made a playable instrument for this contest, the neck in particular does feel very much like a Mark I, a prototype. There are refinements to be made, but with the contest deadline looming and my budget in the state it is, I can't really do that right now. So yeah, I, I'm just going to roll with what I've got and hope for the best. So the good news is I wire up all the frets, the connections work. The bad news is when I was uh, filing the edges of the frets off, I haven't dressed them, I've just filed them off so I wouldn't keep stabbing myself, um, I ended up scraping the stain off uh, both sides. Okay, so I've got the chase mode wiring installed. So it's actually now time to install the super secret super weapon. Right, now the catch is the PCBs only have solder pads on the top layer. This is because originally my plan was to install these, uh, wrap them into the neck rather than into the fretboard. So I'm gonna have to wire them up off on the side and then carefully install them in. Sorry, I thought that'd be a lot more interesting. Currently, right now, everything is uh, equipped with a bit of Pre-tin, 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 solder, 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 test with a beeping machine. I think I'm probably just gonna do all this off camera and jump cut until the end. It is several hours later. I have been sucking solder fumes longer than I can remember. However, I think it was all worth it. Yes, I overdubbed the sound effects. Who thanks to my friend and fellow Sabersmith, J.B. Kuma of J.B. Kuma's Mad Science Workshop. Great guy, great with NeoPixels. He wrote that lightsaber scrolling code for me. I was gonna write it myself, but I spent too much time doing woodwork. Uh, links to his YouTube channel in the comment section below. 
I've got everything uh, actually wired up to just an Arduino just for testing purposes. So uh, yeah, now I can demonstrate in chase mode. This is just a wire to represent my guitar strings. Uh, it's connected to one of the grounds of the Arduino. And all I have to do is touch one of the uh, frets that has an LED attached to it, and the LEDs will light up. Pretty cool, huh? Very nearly got started for the day and realised that I completely forgotten to uh, bring my camera. So, I have routed a very tiny uh, half millimetre recess into the neck because some of the uh, ribbon cable just wasn't sitting flush. I'm going to drill two holes into the neck uh, on each side to pass the uh, wires through and then I'll drill, I'll drill two corresponding holes in the body, uh, most likely off camera. I got the sewing things threaded through. That was a very easy process, which certainly did not involve language like this. Get in there, you little bastard! All this! Ah! Right, I've got all the important areas masked off. There is no time like the present. Right, I wish I had the luxury of giving this a full 24 hour clamp up, but as it's uh, June 19th and I uh, am fast running out of time, I'm gonna give this three, four hours. Hopefully that should be enough. Then I will start working on the neck carve. Right, the last thing to do before I get started on the neck carve is to build holes to mount the nut. Now, I'm not going to mount the nut this video, mainly because I haven't uh, made it yet, or actually decided what shape it's going to be. Uh, I'm pretty sure that it's going to be made out of aluminum angle, uh, but I'm, I'm still working on, on the uh, string locking mechanism. Uh, one thing I have decided though is that I'm going to mount it uh, like an old school Floyd Rose, with uh, bolts going in from the front and threaded inserts being mounted in the back. As this neck has neither scarf joint nor headstock, the guitar being dropped, landing on the headstock, and uh, the headstock breaking off because the threaded inserts have created a stress riser in a glue joint is not going to be an issue. Yeah, that's my justification and I'm uh, sticking with it. The last thing I'm going to do in this video is carve the neck. As pretty much everything else in this build, this is not going to be a standard job. I'm actually going to go for an asymmetric neck carve. So my reasoning behind this is actually down to ergonomics. I prefer your thin wizard style neck. This is a guitar I haven't finished and I must get around to finishing. It's got a thin neck so it'll, it'll do as an, an example. When I play, because of the ergonomics of the neck, it feels comfortable for me to have my fretting hand in this position with the thumb over the top. Something that all my guitar teachers over the years have agreed on is that if I want to be good on the uh, shred side of things, my thumb needs to move down to an imaginary line on the middle of the neck where the skunk stripe would be if I had a guitar with a skunk stripe. Because of the ergonomics of uh, a carved neck, it feels better for me, even when I'm up here, to keep my thumb on top. The idea here is to remedy that with an asymmetric carve. Only the bottom side will get a standard neck carve. Top side, for basic ergonomic sake, I will just give a quick once over pass with a, uh, a three quarter inch round over bit. Get this clamp down and set up and uh, let's do that. Should have realized that that round over bit was in fact one of those molding cutting bits. So I've got a little bit of a lip there to clean off, but that's fine. Okay, so next step is to uh, actually carve in the other side. Nothing new here, this is just gonna be your standard facet, 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 sand job. I think I've taken off enough on this side. Uh, I'm just slowly bringing in that little uh, lip left over from the round of it with this Stanley knife scraper. After I blend this in, I'm gonna start bringing in the sandpaper. I've got a couple of spots where the rust went a bit deep and I'm having a hard time getting them out with sandpaper. So I switched to uh, the card scraper and it's going gangbusters. <laughs> There's one thing I've learned this build, never underestimate the power of a card scraper. I think this is a good point to, to, uh, to stop. So the neck is uh, shaped. I've sanded the neck in uh, to just to 100 grit. I'll probably take it up to 180 before I apply some oil. That's for the finishing video. The asymmetric carve is definitely doing its job. The curve being more ergonomic on one side than the other does make my thumb feel drawn towards the center line more than holding it on top. Maybe there is something to uh, this crazy idea. That about wraps it up, doesn't it? Oh, sure. What's more? Oh, the joy of near pixels. Right then, uh, as I'm recording this, it is still June 19th, just. I have a week and a couple of days to make this thing look a little bit less naked, do all the setup work, build a nut and the string locking mechanism, somehow make a supercut. I have no idea how I'm gonna produce five half hour videos into one 15 minute montage. I guess there'll be some 80s synth pop. The plan as stands is to put out the last video and the supercut on either the 28th or the 29th. I guess I will uh, see you guys then. Thanks for watching.